A few days ago, he finally did it. He gave a love letter to a girl who was on the library committee with him. The girl of his dreams was called Masaki Hainda. He wondered what she would answer. But in the midst of his holiday, out of nowhere, in the middle of his room, a door appeared. He couldn't understand what it was and did it lead somewhere. The young man cautiously approached the door and heard a voice inviting him to enter. Having opened the mysterious door, he found himself in some kind of dungeon or narrow room. In front of him stood a girl who confidently said that his name was Fumio Kajima. She asked Fumio if he was surprised. Kajima asked the girl how she knew his name and who she was. The girl replied that he could call her Lily the Devil. Although she can't tell him her real name, Fumio couldn't believe that the devil had come to his room. Fumio was surprised to see that Lily could fly. She was pleased that the young man had calmed down. She thought he would worry a little longer. Fumio replied that he was not at all calmed down and wanted to know who she really was. Lily replied that she was a devil campaign girl. Fumio asked her what she wanted from him. Lily thanked him for being a quick thinker. She informed Fumio that he had won in the company of the devil's help. Lily congratulated him on his victory and the young man exclaimed that he had not pretended to do anything like that. Lily noticed that this was not the case. They were celebrating the 10,000th anniversary of the founding of the devil world, and in honor of this, she was sent here to help the most talented person. Fumio asked incredulously, the most talented. Lily confirmed this and said that he has an extraordinary talent for being a villain. Fumio was indignant and declared that he was not like that at all. He's a good person, he always donates money to the convenience store. Lily said that he is only doing this now, but he has truly outstanding talent. Much better than a scammer or a bloodthirsty killer, Fumio stated that she was simply insulting him. Lily was surprised and said that she was not insulting him, but praising him. Basically, the more evil there is, the stronger their power becomes. That's why the entire devilish world supports talents like him. After these words, Fumio decided that it was just a prank. He shook his head, looking for a hidden camera. However, Lily told him that there are no cameras here, he just has to accept it all like a man. Fumio replied that she was a persistent girl, and he accepted her information. Then he asked what should he do now. Lily said that she would give him power, and he could use it however he wanted. She grants him the power to create this room. The girl spread her arms to the sides. Fumio replied that he did not want this power at all. Lily asked him to listen to the end because she intended to explain everything to him in detail. The first and most important thing he needs to remember is that he can call this room wherever he is. Second, the door can only be seen by him and those he has authorized. Third, if he deletes the room, everything inside will disappear. Fourth, once someone is in the room, said person will not be able to leave without permission. Lastly, and this is very important, as his level increases his abilities will improve. The girl said that he could use it to store things or imprison someone here. The she-devil smiled and asked the young man, isn't this a good deal? After that, she disappeared and Fumio did not have time to respond. Three days have passed since then. The ability to create a room that he thought was very dubious was actually very convenient. For example, he could throw his backpack in this room and go to school empty-handed, and at school, calling the door, pick him up. This differs from secret gadgets in that it requires its presence to activate, but it is a handy ability in many ways. For example, if he is traveling with a group of friends, then everyone will stay in the room except him, and then they will only have to pay for one person's travel. True, there is one serious drawback in this regard. Fumio has no friends with whom he could travel. Fumio entered the classroom and his classmates looked at him in a non-unfriendly manner. They all thought he was a pretty disgusting guy. One of them decided to have fun and put his foot in his way. Fumio fell to the floor with a crash. The culprit behind his downfall, Kazuya Junishi, asked him if he really didn't understand his place. This guy was the ace of the football club and the girl's favorite. In addition, he was incredibly strong in fights. Kazuya was the most popular person in class, the complete opposite of Fumio. 
The young man apologized and asked what he did wrong. A girl with white hair named Fujiwara reported that he confessed his feelings to Masaki. Fumio annoyedly asked her how she knew this. The girl turned away and asked why he was so nervous. Another girl, menacingly placing her hands on her hips, asked him if it seemed to him that he should already know his place. This girl's name was Misuzu Kurosawa. She was a teen magazine model and a cool Madonna. Misuzu took out the letter he wrote to the girl and asked him how dare he confess to Masaki in such a disgusting and pathetic manner. She read out the part where he promised to make Masaki happy. Misuzu called him stupid and told him to never go near Masaki again. Fumio asked the girl to return this letter to him. Instead of a letter, Fumio received a kick in the face from Kazuya. He asked the young man what he wanted to do with Misuzu. Fumio replied that he just wanted his letter back. Kazuya Junishi, continuing to beat him, said that if he wants this to stop, then he must kneel down and show his sincerity. He must say words of apology in front of the whole class. Fumio knelt down and said the words that Kazuya demanded of him. But this was not enough for him. He ordered the young man to put his head on the floor and do it again. Fumio complied with the order and said that he was a scumbag who caused a lot of trouble to everyone and he was very sorry. Kazuya leaned over to him and said with satisfaction that he actually did it and that he was a pathetic bastard. Misuzu added her boots to Fumio's ribs and said that they would now let him off the hook for today, but he must not go near Masaki again. After that, he went to the toilet to wash off the marks of the beating, and his classmates agreed that he was a very pathetic and disgusting guy. At this time, Fumio remembered the words of the Devil Lily that he could use the room to store things or imprison someone there. She said that he could use his miraculous power as he saw fit. Fumio immediately decided that his classmates would regret that they bullied him like that. He definitely decided to make them all regret it. The next day, Misuzu Kurosawa, late for class, ran into the school hallway. Fumio decided to start with her. He used his skill. And a door suddenly appeared in front of the girl, into which she jumped by inertia. Once in the room, she fearfully thought, what kind of place is this? The girl knelt down and asked who did this to her. Then she saw Fumio and was amazed. Misuzu called him a disgusting person and asked him what the hell he was doing here. She threatened the young man that he would not get away with this. Fumio grinned and asked her if she still didn't understand her place. He calmly informed Misuzu that he would ban her here for life. After these words he felt joy. Revenge has begun. After Fumio's words, Misuzu called him a moron and ordered him to get her out of here immediately. Fumio was deliberately silent. Although his heart was beating very hard, in her position his silence was much more terrible than anything he would say. Watching the girl, Fumio realized that this was the right choice. Concern appeared on Misuzu's face. The young man thought it was quite funny. This is what it's like to be a bully. Then he saw Lily, who happily said that he finally had the motivation to do it. She asked, is this girl his target? She asked how he wanted to torture her, or maybe he wants to kill her. Misuzu, looking at Lily in horror, asked who is this flying girl. Fumio noted that Lily doesn't have to talk like a demon, to which the girl replied that she is a demon. Misuzu had a hard time understanding what they were talking about. She asked what demons they were talking about, and who this cosplayer was. Lily asked the young man if he didn't think that this girl should understand her situation. Fumio agreed with her and told Misuzu that in front of her is the demon Lily, who gave him power and it seems that she cannot believe it. He explained that he had been given the ability to create a room and now it, captive of said power. Misuzu refused to believe this nonsense and Fumio said that she was free to think that it was all a lie. Then he explained that her phone would not work here either. If she doesn't believe it, she can try it. After these words, the young man prepared to leave. Misuzu stopped him and asked where he was going. Fumio replied that they couldn't talk now until she cooled her head. He'll be back in a couple of days. After that he left. Lily, floating invisibly in the air next to Fumio, told him that she was becoming more and more interesting. 
How is he going to kill this girl, starve her? The young man replied that he was not going to do this. Fumio only now realized that he was the only person who could see Lily outside the room. He stated that being in the dark without food or water is enough to cause Misuzu to faint and then she will reflect on her actions. Lily commented that this was very condescending. After that, Fumio went to class. His classmates were surprised that he came to class after everything that happened yesterday. Takioka exclaimed that this is what he said. This means that now it's his victory and they have to pay him everything. Lily said in Fumio's ear that they were obviously betting on whether Fumi would come to class or not. She remarked that it must be nice to live in ignorance. Their friend, on the other hand, is shaking in fear. Then she asked the young man what was wrong. Fumio replied that everything was fine, but he was simply surprised by the change in his opinion. It was hard for him to breathe or look up when he was in class with these kids. But as soon as he accepted his strength, his spirit suddenly became lighter. Then the young man saw Masaki, who was looking in his direction. Did she really notice something? But he immediately threw this thought aside. It was impossible. It took two days. There were no classes at school today. Fumio decided to see how his captive felt. While Kurosawa was away, the classroom was the same as usual. Come to think of it, she often skipped classes because of her modeling job. Speaking of her boyfriend Kazuya, he looked upset. He can't seem to get through to her. Fumio entered the room and asked how she was doing. He saw Misuzu sitting on the floor completely upset. What happened here? Her phone was broken and lying next to her. Apparently she took her anger out on him because she couldn't get a signal. He looked at the girl's face and thought about how people can change in just two days. He greeted the girl and handed her water. Misuzu knelt down in front of him and asked him to save her. She asked him for forgiveness. Fumio felt a pleasant electric current running down his spine. He was afraid that these were some kind of sadistic desires. He ordered himself to calm down and decided that he was doing everything right. Fumio told the girl that he would not forgive her, and Kurosawa said that she was going to die. Fumio confirmed her words and said that it was possible because she was dehydrated. She only has a couple of days left to live. The girl again asked him for forgiveness and said that she was wrong. Fumio reminded her that when he asked for forgiveness, what did she do? She hit him. Misuzu said that she could set him up with Masaki. Fumio reminded her again how she told her not to come near her two days ago. Her friend said the same thing, and now she is betraying her friend. What a terrible girl she is. Fumio also told her that she misunderstood him. After all, Masaki is also to blame, and as soon as he is done with her, she will be next. The young man thought that he wasn't really going to do this, but he could at least threaten Misuzu with it. The girl hiccuped and asked him not to kill her. Fumio stated that if she doesn't want to die, then she should ask for forgiveness at the dojasa. The girl followed his order and knelt down, bowing her head low. Misuzu stated that she would allow him to do this to her. Fumio couldn't believe what he just heard. What did she just say? And he was still a virgin. In other words, this is something that he considered completely inaccessible to him. Isn't this his only chance in life that he can take advantage of? Fumio thought with alarm that Kurosawa was a model and artist. It's all quite confusing. Plus, Kurosawa has a boyfriend, but she easily offers him her body. In other words, she's pretty easygoing. Obviously, she came up with a plan. She tries to drag him into her fortress to laugh at his poor sexual skills. She is trying to gain a mental advantage over him. He looked into Miss Yujo's eyes and thought that she was truly a scary woman. Let her calm down. He decided to just strategically retreat a little. Fumio told her that he was not interested in her proposal. The girl tried to explain herself, but Fumio said that she ruined his mood. He left her a bottle of water and left. Misuzu greedily rushed to the water and then began to cry loudly. Fumio called Lily and she asked him how are you? Perhaps he finally wanted to kill his captive. The young man replied that he needed her advice. The devil was ready to answer any question. Fumio knelt down and asked her to teach.
Willie laughed and said that basically he didn't want to be made fun of for being bad so he wanted to practice with Lily. Fumio replied that this is one way to express it. She told the young man that Lily is a pure maiden. Does he really want to reach out and have his way with such a girl? Fumio looked at her rather revealing outfit and asked if she could really say that while she was wearing this. He admitted that he ultimately intended to free Kurosawa. He thought that if he could make her fall in love with him, it would stop her from saying nasty things. Lily noticed that this was all just a virgin's fantasy. She will just tell him now about things like becoming obedient or hypnosis magic to make people listen to him. Lily warned Fumio against jumping to conclusions. She said there is one way. This method is called brainwashing. The young man asked, isn't this hypnosis? Lily replied that this was not the case. Such a thing as human common sense is a fragile thing, built on the experience of knowledge. So he just needs to destroy it and instill new common sense in a way that suits Fumi. This is brainwashing. Fumio noticed that it sounded difficult, but asked Lily to teach him how to do it. The she-devil grinned and said that then Lily Sensei was going to teach him a lesson in brainwashing. The next day, Misuzu Kurosawa sat in complete darkness in her captivity and felt that she was dying of hunger. The thirst subsided, but she was terribly hungry. Why did she tell Fumio that she was ready to give him her body? How pathetic she is. She felt hungry, and at this rate she could soon die. She also longed to see her boyfriend Kazuya Junishi. Just then Fumio arrived. The girl asked to listen to her. She admitted that they had gone overboard with him in class. Her speech was interrupted by Fumio's blow. Misuzu was surprised that he dared to do this. The young man acted according to Lily's brainwashing program. She taught him that he must remember that it starts with violence. This clarifies the positions of the parties involved. The basics of carrot and stick are very important. Fumio told Misuzu that she was misunderstanding something. He recalled Misuzu's undignified proposal and stated that he could do this to her by force, but she still does not understand her place. The girl realized that this man was going to kill her. Meanwhile, Fumio decided to give her hope in the form of a stick. He calmed the girl down and said that he would teach her how to get out of here. The girl exclaimed joyfully, will he really let her out? Fumio thought it was a line, hook and sinker. He replied that it was up to her. For example, this does not mean that she will allow him to hug her. She should bow her head and ask him for a hug. So what if she's a model? Or a cool Madonna, for that matter? Now it's simply worthless. But if she shows him that she is worth something, then he will take good care of her. He could even let her out of here. Fumio wondered what Kurosawa would do. According to Lily, she must be having trouble thinking right now because she's hungry. Now all that remains is to make her think that if he likes her, then everything will be resolved successfully. This was the first step of brainwashing. The girl understood everything. Fumio told Kurosawa that he would allow her to satisfy him. He remembered Lily's words that if he didn't want his ver to be mocked, then he should just let her do it herself. She taught him to just lie down and if something went wrong, it would be her fault. He asked Lily if she would like it. The devil assured him that everything would be fine. Lily stated that Kurosawa was incredibly hungry and her brain was not working properly due to lack of nutrition. She has the mental capacity of a drunk office worker. She will accept illogical things without thinking about it. It is important that this is a carrot and a stick. After he has cornered her with a stick, he must give her a way out. The young man asked Lily if this meant that he should let her out. The devil asked him not to make hasty conclusions. There is an important first step of brainwashing. It needs to be given a purpose. Her carrot would be that if Fumi fell in love with her, then she could leave. With this, she will think about making him fall in love. Fumio thought that if she was trying to make him fall in love, she would have to do it to him. Lily warned him that today would just be the first step. If they feed her now, then her mind will return, but if he copulates with her once, then the obstacle to brainwashing will disappear. The young man thought that her words made sense. Lily claimed that if he did it right, by the end of the day the girl would become Fumi's lover. He can keep her as a woman or simply sell her. 
Fumio remembered how he then spent the entire night studying. Kurosawa complained to him that the room was dark and she couldn't see well. However, Fumio told her that nothing could be done. Then the girl was surprised by his innocent reaction. She praised his toy for its decent size. Fumio decided that such praise was not at all superfluous. He asked her if she wasn't going to do anything else, then maybe they could call it a day. Misuzu replied that she did not know what to do, and the young man asked if she was not an experienced woman. The girl replied that she only did this once, and Junishi did most of the work. Fumio realized that his plan, which was to let this girl do everything herself, had failed. It turns out that he won't be able to brainwash her. Then Lily came to the rescue, appearing out of nowhere. She said if she wanted, she could teach her how to do it. Kurosawa recognized Lily, who declared that she was on her side because a pretty girl like her was too good for Fumi. She whispered to the girl to do as she says. Fumio realized that Lily was pretending to be Kurosawa's ally and was giving her instructions in an attempt to correct the situation. He was grateful to her for this. Kurosawa agreed for Lily to teach her. She told Misuzu to undress. She warned her that there was no boy in this world who would be excited by the mischievous appearance of a girl. Misuzu asked Lily if she was really an old man inside. After that, a message came that his level had increased. In addition, Misuzu Kurosawa's status changed to subordinate. As Fumio leveled up, he gained several functions. Lily said that this was the leveling mechanic she mentioned earlier. The level of room creation has increased, and he can now make up to four rooms at a time. In addition, the level of furniture installation has increased. The young man asked Lily if the skill of silence meant that they could not speak in this room. Does it silence them? Lily replied that he just stopped talking. This skill looks good at first glance, but it doesn't work with messages or emails. Subject is a state in which limited people fall. If someone falls into a slave state, then he will completely take over their souls, but if he leaves them alone in a submissive or dependent state, they will eventually return to their normal state. Lily said that she would clean up the place and he should go to school. It's important that he doesn't look suspicious now. Fumio said that he still wanted to enjoy the aftertaste a little, but she was right. After Fumio left, Lily looked at Kurosawa lying motionless and thought that the problem with virgins is that they don't know how to control themselves. She decided that she would let Misuzu lick the aphrodisiac a little. Soon she saw that the girl's complexion became better. Then Lily called her maid Freysha. She appeared and asked if the princess called her. Lily said that as expected from her servant, she was quick to respond and help her. Lily ordered the girl to clean up Kurosawa and take him to the room they had prepared yesterday. She ordered Freysha to do everything else as planned. She nodded understandingly and noticed she would also like to be Fumi Fumi's partner. Lily replied that Fumi Fumi would be completely exhausted if he did this to an older succubus. Just at that moment, Fumio, late for class, hurriedly headed towards the school. He thought about the fact that he had done this to Kurosawa after all. She mocked him. She was the girl every guy dreamed of, and now he did something similar to her himself. At the end, she even said that she had an amazing feeling. Fumio decided that he would give himself even more such pleasure. He leveled up and can now create up to four rooms at a time. This means that he can brainwash Kurosawa and three other people at the same time. The young man did not think about repentance, he wanted revenge. Exactly. Fumoi only thought about who would be his next target now. Misuzu woke up after a passionate night and was surprised to find herself in a luxurious room on a beautiful bed. She is dressed in clean and fresh linen. A pleasant female voice greeted her. Misuzu looked up and saw a girl who called herself Phrygia. She informed Kurosawa that she had the honor of courting her. Fumi Fumi ordered to look after the girl. Misuzu couldn't believe what she was saying about this disgusting guy. Fridzia reported that the gentleman was very satisfied and wished her a good rest. Only then did the girl remember everything. Indeed, she herself gave herself to him. She allowed him to do whatever he wanted with her, and in the end there was a sea of pleasure in which she did not know what to do. 
she was offended and ashamed. She turned to Fridzia and stated that she wanted to go home. The maid replied that this was impossible because it was impossible to leave this room. In addition, to return, you need permission from Mr. Fumi Fumi. In other words, if he allows it, then she can go. It's not that far off, because he couldn't spend the whole evening loving a woman he didn't like. Kurosawa asked if his love was that great. Fridzia replied that it all depended on whether she responded to his feelings. The girl said that this was out of the question because she already had a boyfriend named June. Fridzia advised her to at least pretend to accept Fumi Fumi's favor until he got tired of it. Kurosawa replied that she could do that. If he gets tired of her, he will let her go. Fridzia objected and said that tired toys are not returned to the store, they are thrown into the trash. Then the maid asked if Misuzu was hungry. According to her wishes, she prepared a high-quality steak. If she doesn't like it, she's ready to make another one. Kurosawa was surprised that Phrygia called her madam. After that, she greedily attacked the food. Misuzu said that although it was indecent, she had not eaten anything properly for several days, and therefore she could not stop. Phrygia offered milk yogurt with condensed milk and a specific filling. However, Kurosawa refused and simply asked for water. Finally, she had enough and told Phrygia that she wanted to sleep. As she fell asleep, the girl thought that perhaps Fridzia would become her ally because she is a very kind girl. Misuzu woke up as quickly as she fell asleep. Fridzia was next to her again. To her horror, she was back in the same room where Fumio had put her. Phrygia stated that it was something of a bonus a few minutes ago. The maid said that she would give her food that would keep her alive. She threw her one slice of bread and a bottle of water. When Kurosawa was again left alone in this dark room, her thoughts again became gloomy. So it's not a joke, it's here again. Having tasted that paradise, she cannot stand it. She didn't want to go hungry anymore. She asked to call that freak. Fridzia asked why she needed this. The girl replied that she wanted to fall in love with him quickly in order to get out of here faster. Lily appeared out of nowhere, laughed and said that not only her stomach was swollen, but also her self-esteem. She better try not to bore Fumi Fumi because he is now looking for new prey. Perhaps he will never return to the used Kurosawa. The girl immediately remembered Phrygia's words that used toys are thrown into the trash. Misuzu asked, does that mean she will be killed? She didn't want to die at all. Lily said that nothing could be done about it, but she would ask the young man to meet with her one more time. Kurosawa happily declared that if he came, he would like everything. Lily thought with satisfaction that the brainwashing program was working well. I wonder what Fumi Fumi is doing there. Fumio, meanwhile, slept well. He worked all weekend and therefore asked to go to the medical office to sleep. The inspector came because of Kurosawa. Kazuya and the guys asked questions. They cannot know about his power, and all the inspector's efforts will be in vain. At this time someone called out to him. It was Masaki Hainda's voice. She asked from behind the screen how he was feeling and apologized for what had happened. She said that she didn't think at all that this would happen, and that he would be beaten and humiliated in front of the whole class. They just talked to Misuzu, and at some point she told her everything. Afterwards, she said goodbye and expressed hope that she and Fumio would work together in the library. Masaki left so quickly that Fumio didn't have time to say anything to her. Then he decided to test the passage. As Lily said, with the help of the created room, he can now pass through walls. He decided to try this skill on the wall of a medical office. Fumio called a passage and found himself in a room where no one was there. He decided that Kurosawa must have been placed in another room since he could now create more rooms. Then he went out into the corridor and realized that now any defense would be easier than a steam turnip. He walked to the door and quietly told Kazuya to get ready because he was very close. Fumio knew that ordinary people could not see this door, but it was still better to be on guard. Suddenly he saw Kazuya and Fujiwara in the room. This was expected from the girl. This way of closing the distance apparently came out of her desire to become the successor to the missing Misuzu. 
Lily, appearing out of nowhere, whispered in his ear that this was completely different. The young man asked Lily how long she had been here. She replied that she had come to check everything. Lily said pointing at Fujiwara that this girl wants Kazuya. She no longer has a Kurosawa roof and needs a new one. And in fact she smells just like him. At the young man's surprised look, Lily replied that it was the smell of a child being bullied. He was surprised and asked if it was Fujiwara. With that look, Lily replied that this appearance was just a defense, like the threatening coloring of animals. Lily advised Fumio to choose her as his next victim, although she was a bit boring, but he would easily seduce her. Suddenly, Fumio saw in the shadow of Teruya Mitsuru the top athletics club, which followed Kurosawa in popularity. There were rumors that she was in love with Kazuya. It turns out that she is jealous of Fujiwara. Lily said she was being bullied, and she only has a superficial knowledge, so there's no chance. Fumio asked her to stop being straight like a fireball. The next day, Fumio finally finished cleaning around the school. He was forced to sweep the trash around the old building. Even worse, he trained all night long to brainwash under Lily's guidance. This is an important time for the program that had to be abandoned. Fumio thought that he would not win her with fear alone, they needed a new approach to win her body and soul. However, there is no need to take a break from studying either. He was interested in the old school building. It's not in use, so he can rest there. The fact that the building was closed was not a problem for him. He calmly entered the building and decided that a place where there were no bullies was calming. Suddenly he heard some noise. Looking around the corner, he saw that they were girls from the athletics club and Fujiwara with them. They stood near some locked door. There was an uneasy atmosphere among them. One girl in particular attracted attention because she behaved pompously. She asked Fujiwara if she had brought the key and told her to open the door. Her name was Teruya. The girl from the club behaved like a queen. Even though she was recruited from athletics and came from a school in another county. The young man could not understand what was wrong with these two girls. Is it really jealousy? Soon the door was open. The group entered the audience. Fumio couldn't understand what they were planning. Suddenly he heard a scream and it seemed to him that it was Fujiwara's voice. What is happening there? He looked into the room and saw that she was sitting on the floor and teenagers were standing around her. The girls told Teruya that Fujiwara decided to pretend that she didn't know what was going on. She was attracted to Junishi-kun and someone like her should call him Junishi-sama. Teruya hit her. The girl knelt down and asked for forgiveness, saying that she would not make such a mistake again. Fumio decided that slapping him for such a thing was too much. Looks like Teruya is very dangerous. Fujiwara stated that there was a misunderstanding and she was not hitting on Kazuya at all. After that she wanted to leave, but Terui had a different opinion. She said Kagane's name, but Fujiwara replied that she had made a mistake. However, from the girl's reaction, it was clear that Teruya had hit the bullseye. She said that the girl was very similar, but she didn't immediately understand because her name and manner of dressing were different. Teruya said thoughtfully that she was overcome by memories. She asked, apparently it was not easy for her to escape. There is no longer a sponsor, and there is no way to cope with the stress. Fumio realized that Fujiwara used to be called Kagane, and obviously Teruya was bullying her. It looks like Lily was completely right. Teruya said menacingly, how can such a dirty whore who sold for 10,000 an hour get close to Junishi-sama? Fumio realized that Fujiwara was a prostitute, she asked for forgiveness and said that she would do anything. Teruya then ordered her to undress. They decided to take embarrassing photos so that she wouldn't do anything like that again. Having witnessed the bullying of a girl, Fumio decided that it was a cruel joke. Teruya said, turning to Fujiwara, that it would be good to show her her place by telling all this to her sister. Maybe she wants to help her earn some pocket money again. Meanwhile, the girl was left in only her underwear and asked if that was enough. Truya said that she could take off her bra too. Then she pointed at her breasts and said that she was a liar because her bra was very thickly padded. 
Fujiwara again asked for forgiveness, and Teruya promised to tell everything to her sister, whom she is afraid of. She recently married a Yakuza, and if they find out about her, she won't get away with Fujiwara took off her bra and said that she understood everything. The teenagers laughed and said she looked like a washboard. Who just bought it? Teruya said that now she will take a lot of embarrassing photos. Fumio thought that the girl who bullied him had become a victim herself. Obviously, that's what she needs. However, he could not understand why he was angry. Did a sense of justice really begin to speak in him? Then he realized that he was angry because his prey was intercepted. He must decide Fujiwara's fate. To settle everything, you need to save her. Fumio thought feverishly, what should he do? The enemy, although they are girls, are quite strong physically, and the numerical advantage is not on their side. Throw them into the room using force, but if he misses even one of them, all is lost. He couldn't take that risk. Then Fumio remembered that there were rumors that this old school building was haunted. He thought that he could use this. He first quietly walked into the adjacent auditorium and used his power, causing passage. Now the others were behind the wall of the room along with Fujiwara. Fumio decided to test the conditions of the ability. This door could only be seen by those he allowed. As long as the door is closed, what's inside will also be hidden and if you open the door slightly, they will hear the voice. After all, when he opened the door to see how Kurosawa was doing, he clearly heard her crying. Everything should have worked out, we could get down to business. Fumio decided to scare the girls. Suddenly they heard a strange creak and became wary. They couldn't figure out where the sound was coming from. Teruya exclaimed that they were imagining things and told Fujiwara to quickly take off the remaining clothes. But then a creaking and knocking sound was heard again from nowhere. The girls were seriously scared. They also knew the legends about ghosts in this building. Truya told Fujiwara not to dare come near Kazuya again. After that, the whole group ran away. Fumio was happy to realize that he had done well. Then he noticed that Fujiwara could not get up. The girl was very scared, and Fumio decided that this was a great opportunity for him. He entered the classroom and greeted Fujiwara, stating that he did not expect to meet her there. He asked her if she was really that scared. The girl rushed to him in tears. She told the young man that she didn't know who he was, but she was very scared. Kajima said his name and said that he and she were in the same class. The girl couldn't believe it, and he said, was she really bullying a guy she didn't even know? He advised her to put on clothes. Fumio thought with surprise that he had come to threaten her, but the circumstances somehow changed. Fumin, another girl who calls him weird, what kind of gesture is this? Meanwhile, Fujiwara asked him to pick her up because her legs were giving out and asked him to carry her home. Fumio asked if she really asks everyone she meets about this. The girl replied that there are no random passers-by in an uninhabited old school building, and a ghostly voice does not happen here by chance either. Fumio decided that she understood everything, but he thought of her as an ordinary fool. The young man was deciding what to do, maybe knock her out? Then Fujiwara pressed herself close to him and said that she had not heard any voice at all. She asked him to stay with her until she could get up. Fujiwara told him that he saved her, and if he had not come, her life would have ended. She was a simpleton last school, but one day she caught the eye of Teruya. She immediately realized that this girl could easily kick her ass. Fumio asked the reaction of the parents or the police. The girl replied that she could not talk about it because her mother would go crazy. She decided to remarry and they moved here. She decided to do everything so that she would not be bullied at the next school. And decisively, she became who she is now. At first, to avoid being bullied, she was going to disguise herself, but now she is who she is. Fumio thought that Lily was right again about this girl's threatening coloring. He asked Fujiwara how Teruya ended up in this school. The girl replied that she herself was surprised. She was recruited from athletics, and it was an incredible coincidence. Fujiwara said that in fact her sister was much more dangerous. If she doesn't touch Kazuya, there won't be any problems with Teruya. 
but my sister Anna Senpai is truly dangerous. Fumio came up with the idea to kidnap this girl just like Misuzu. He asked the girl if she knew anything about Kurosawa. Fujiwara replied that she ran away and suggested that Anna Senpai was involved in this. The girl explained a certain connection. Teruya is in love with Kazuya. Anna Senpai adores Teruya, so she kidnapped her. Fumio thought that there was indeed a connection. This girl made an interesting suggestion. This is really interesting, and he needs to use it to cover his tracks. Fujiwara was finally able to move freely on her own. She asked the young man to take her home. As they walked down the street, Fumio thought that Fujiwara was supposed to be a contender for a new victim, but why was he walking with the victim arm in arm? Fumio decided that Fujiwara was a very strange girl. A bully, a victim of bullying, flashing her small tits as if it were a merchandise sale. Finally they came to a huge house with a luxurious gate. This was Fujiwara's house real mansions. It turned out that this girl was also a major. Fujiwara explained that this was her stepfather's huge house. He is the head of one of Japan's major general contracting families. Fujiwara looked the young man straight in the eyes and told him not to be scared, she remained independent. Fumio must have hated her, and with these thoughts he went home. Lily told him that this was an important part of the brainwashing program, he was having a good time, like in a sweet and sour romantic comedy. Fumio asked for forgiveness and said that he had changed his mind about making her his victim for a reason. Lily asked him if he was talking about the Teruya sisters, they are really very interesting, and she found out something about them. Lily stated that he would seduce Kurosawa that night. He needs to pull himself together. The young man assured that he would use everything he had learned in these few days. After the imprisonment and insult, her sanity was shaken, and this was the best moment. Lily asked him if he was ready. He must be a beast and a gentleman at the same time. Lily admonished him and said that he even trained at night. With this plan, Fumio decided that he would seduce Kurosawa on this long-awaited night. Misuzu thought gloomily that she did not want to disappear and did not want to die. She didn't understand why she did this. Her thoughts were spinning incoherently. She remembered how she took part in bullying Fumio. He was such a nasty guy and wrote a letter to Masaki. She told the girl that she was no match for him. When she stepped on his head, did she feel pleasure? Didn't she get goosebumps all over her body at that moment? Kurosawa felt that this was retribution. The choice she was left with. It's love or death. The only way to return to your beloved Jun is if Fumio pleases you. Then she saw Fumio enter the room. She forced herself not to panic. After all, this was her last chance. The young man came up to her and said that it was hard for her, but now everything is fine, she doesn't have to stress. The girl decided that if she cried, Fumio would not like her. However, he didn't mind her crying, he will love her just like that. Fumio hugged Misuzu and pressed his lips to hers. Kurosawa discovered that Kajima was a good kisser, and he thought that everything was going well so far. He was determined to show her the results of his special training. He remembered Lily teaching him a few hours ago. She was like a professor, and he was a lecturer. The lecture was called How to Seduce Kurosawa. Lily explained that the first step was to promote Kurosawa's brainwashing. Intimidation alone can only achieve compliance. What to do in this case? Fumio replied that next time he would be kinder, communicating by mutual agreement. Lily said he responded like a virgin. Then the young man suggested that he would hug and kiss her. Lily noticed that unpopular men always seek a woman's consent. This is the same as putting responsibility on her, so he won't force himself to be loved. Fumio asked her what should he do. Lily said that this plan is called the gentleman and the beast. He must achieve his goal using force and affection. Fumio stated that he had now truly lost his virginity. This was a difficult obstacle for him. Lily asked Fumio not to worry because her girl was already giving Kurosawa soft and hard hints. She hinted to her that she could get out of here if she made him fall in love. The next time they meet, she will have to act like she likes him, even if it's pretend. She told him to proceed with the beast gentleman plan. 
she was sure that this time he would defeat her because he was a real demon. To make her express her position with her lips to give pleasure, he must remember these two points constantly. Fumio didn't quite understand what the position meant. Lily explained that whether it's a lie or a hint, she must say the word love with her lips. He must let her know that she is in a dependent position, and he will see the effect later. Last time he loved her like a brute beast. If he continues like this, she will associate dating him with pain and suffering. Fumio, with his enormous magical potential, Lily handed him several books. The young man looked at the vulgar pictures and asked if modern girls really read this. Lily explained that there are phrases of action that are collected here that excite girls. If he succeeds in this kind of she will be very satisfied. Fumio asked, isn't this for handsome guys? Lily said they would make her get used to his ugliness. It's just a simple contact effect. It should use a simple contact effect. Simply put, with each meeting good feelings will grow. The wall between the handsome and the ugly is not that high. The first impression is expected to be positive. Fumio himself had thought of something similar, but the first impression was terrible. Wouldn't it have the opposite effect? Lily said that she had prepared everything well. If he makes Kurosawa love himself even a little, then the eel of good feelings will creep up. At this point she ended the lecture and asked him to move on to the practice. Then Fumio looked in surprise at the sleeping Misuzu and thought that this was an incredible sight. She sleeps with such a happy expression on her face. At that moment Lily appeared and said that he had done a good job. Fumio asked her if she saw what condition Kurosawa was in. He completely seduced her. Lily asked if he heard the sound of the level rising. Fumio realized that he had not heard him, so she was pretending to love her, because he doesn't want to die. Lily did not agree with his opinion, she monitored her consciousness, and she definitely fell in love with him or convinced herself that she did. Lily said that she thought Kurosawa fell in love with him, but she loved her boyfriend more. That's the problem. Fumio realized that he was rejoicing early. However, Lily asked him not to rush to conclusions because he had seduced her body and only her soul remained to be seduced. They have a long way to go. She told him to get some sleep and get ready for school while she took care of Kurosawa. Let him rely completely on her. The morning was refreshing, the sun was shining and Fumio was in a great mood. This happens when someone likes you or someone loves you, even if he got it through brainwashing. He was filled with a very warm feeling. It's sad, but while you're being bullied, you don't feel it. When he arrived at school, he was called into the principal's office. Someone wanted to talk to him. The director said that an investigator would come to him. The young man thought with alarm whether the investigation had really reached him. Fumio thought that the investigator came to the classroom a few days ago and collected information about Kurosawa. But for him to call someone individually is very strange. Had he miscalculated somewhere? Although no one can know about his abilities. He entered the office and the investigator, greeting him, apologized for interrupting him from his studies. The investigator asked him not to be nervous and explained that he was interviewing all the students one by one about Kurosawa. He told Fumio that they had interviewed other children about what happened before she disappeared. It was established that the day before she had abused him. The investigator said that they do not suspect him of anything. But it's hard when they bully him. They can't intervene directly, but he mentioned it to the school authorities in passing. Fumio felt that this man was annoying him, even though he was probably a good person. The investigator asked the young man what he knew about Kurosawa. Fumio thought that this good person would get in his way in the future. He replied that it seemed to him that everyone was making a big deal out of a molehill. She just ran away from home. Kurosawa is a model, and she's just hanging out somewhere. The investigator said that on the day of her disappearance, Kurosawa came to school. Given this, it is worth considering not the version of escaping from home, but rather disappearance or abduction. Fumio decided that this was a good argument. Should he use the story of Terui's older sister's crimes as a smokescreen, he decided to try anyway. The young man told the investigator that he was not sure whether it would be useful to them, but 
A girl named Teruya Anna may have something to do with this. Fumio shared his made-up version with the investigator, and he thanked him for it. In the corridor the young man met Masaki. He thanked her for her recent visit to the infirmary. After that, he wanted to invite her somewhere, but the girl replied that she had no desire to meet anyone right now. She expressed the hope that they would remain good friends with him. Masaki said that apparently it was her turn. After that she said goodbye to him. Fumio was not happy to hear this. The girl refused him. Although he believed that he still had a chance, today he decided to skip class because he was tired. Meanwhile, the assistant asked investigator Inomato what he thought about that boy, Kajima Fumio. He replied that this was a classic victim of school bullying. He feels sorry for him, because in the future he will be offended by the whole world. In turn, Inomato asked the girl if she noticed anything. She replied that the boy was cowardly at first glance, but he periodically showed a confident face. All the children they asked about Misuzu Kurosawa today talk about her in the past tense for example, wanted to take a walk with her and so on. The girl noticed that Fumio was talking about her in the present tense, as if he was having fun with her, as if he knew where she was now. Inomato said wearily that she was making up a lot of things, but the assistant said that she would try to watch him for a while. The investigator asked her not to overdo it because her wedding ceremony would take place soon. The girl replied that he should not worry, this is the last thing that Terajima Ryoko is not married, but she will reveal it. A few days later, Fumio once again skipped classes. He lay on the school roof and felt like a guard on a watchtower. Suddenly, he heard the girl's voice and without opening his eyes, said that judging by the vulgar underwear and tone of voice and breasts filled with push-up, it was none other than Fujiwara. The girl said offendedly that it was only his sexist statements that were vulgar. The young man asked the girl what she needed. Fujiwara invited him to meet because they had already seen each other naked. Fumio objected and noticed that she was the only one naked. The girl told him that she recently had a fight with Teruya because she thought she wanted to hook up with Kazuya. If he dates her, she will understand that she was mistaken. Then she asked Fumio if he noticed a special atmosphere in the class. Fujiwara said that Kazuya was completely depressed and at some point he already began to consult with Teruya. She can no longer be in this group. After that, she threw herself on his neck and suggested that they meet again so that everyone in the class could see it. The girl stated that she had fun with him and was easy to communicate with. Fumio replied that only she was having fun, but what was the benefit for him? The girl asked if he was really unhappy with such a sweet girl. If he dates her, maybe he will stop being bullied. Besides, if he agrees to date her, they will make love the way he wants. Fujiwara assured him that he would like her technique. After all, when she was forced to sell herself, she learned a lot. Fumio told her to stop, if they dated, the two of them might get bullied. He assured the girl that he would think about how to help her. Fujiwara noticed that he was too arrogant for a virgin, and the young man replied that he was not a virgin at all. The girl asked where he got such self-confidence from. Fumio replied that he had actually recently talked to Masaki and there was a non-zero chance that she would be with him. She wants him to be her friend and a friend is the main candidate for a future lover. Fujiwara took pity on the young man and said that a little more and he would start stalking but she would console him. The girl suggested going home together. Then she invited him to come into the house so that she could introduce him to his father. Even they can announce their engagement. Fumio thought with annoyance that she knew nothing about personal space. Fujiwara hugged him by the shoulders and asked how many children he wanted and where he wanted to be buried, maybe he wanted a posthumous name. The young man realized that he was in terrible trouble. Suddenly he saw someone running into the park. He took a closer look and recognized it as Masaki. Fumio wondered if she was dating someone. Fujiwara quietly asked the young man why they were hiding. Fumio looked closely and saw that Masaki was meeting with Kazuya. The young man suggested coming closer and listening to what they were talking about. Masaki thanked Junishi for coming. 
She said that she doesn't know, maybe it's a blatant request, but she knows that he loves Misuzu and she cares. She invited Junishi to date. The girl hugged him and said that she wanted to be his. Fumio watched this scene from the bushes in amazement. He mentally called himself a fool. After all, in his heart of hearts, he hoped that the probability regarding Masaki was not zero. But now it was too late. Fumio cursed himself with the last words. He believed the one to whom he had to take revenge. His first love turned to hatred. That day, he imprisoned Hainda Masaki in a room.